What's going on guys? Welcome back to this video. Today we will be doing a try hack me. And I decided to complete or go on with the red teaming pathway. I have started in the previous months, but unfortunately there wasn't a chance to complete this pathway. So up until now, uh, I've covered these rooms. Today we will cover red team OPSEC. So this is completely uh, a non-practical room. I mean, it's not laboratory. It is just uh, information about this framework, OPSEC. We'll be covering this framework as it's important for anyone who is working on or as part of a red team. So basically, uh, red team operates using different frameworks. This framework can be used to solidify the, uh, su the success of the red team operations. So basically, uh, we will be going through the tasks literally will be answering the questions and we'll be taking the practical examples here to demonstrate the framework. So OPSEC is originally a military framework used in the United States military. And by definition, it is a systematic and proven process by which potential adversaries can be denied information about capabilities and intentions. So, so basically here, this statement means that it's a a procedure to or it's a framework for protecting information right about your team capabilities the tools and the intentions how by identifying controlling and protecting generally unclassified evidence of the planning and execution of sensitive activities this might seem complicated but actually it is not so basically from the red team perspective you're planning an attack of course you're authorized to conduct an attack against uh, X organization. So your team is planning an attack. Now your team will use the OPSEC framework. Okay, and will go through the OPSEC steps to hide the activities and protect the integrity of the operation. So basically, in the, under the red team context, we want to prove or we want to assess the organization's security measures. If the blue team on the other end are able to identify our capabilities and our intentions our tools the red team tools the red team capabilities the techniques the procedures the red team will be able to uh, defend against this attack and hence as a red team your mission is failed so OPSEC will help you okay, to prevent the blue team from acquiring what is needed to thwart your mission so that's uh, the objective of OPSEC, protecting the integrity and the success of your mission. How? By you need to go through basic steps. So first we identify critical information. The critical information in the red team perspective is the information about the plan, the capabilities of the team, the tools that will be used, the domain names, the IP addresses, the operating systems. All of these are critical information at the Blue team can learn this information, they can block or at least uh, lower the probability of the success of the operation. After we identify critical information, we want to analyze the threats, vulnerabilities, risks, and lastly apply countermeasures. Now, this might seem like a framework for cyber security, right, or blue team. It can be used there, but it's mainly used in the military and it's very beneficial to the red team as well. So it can be it can be used both sides, blue team and red team. So what constitutes critical information? As you can see here, the author has laid down some examples. As you can see, IP of a server. So the IP of the server, okay. Now here, the example here is the IP of the server of the client we are targeting. This is the username and this is the password. So after we are able to get access to this information, we don't want others to uh, be able to get them. Now, your enemy here is not only the blue team, also other malicious uh, third parties like other hackers, they would also target this information or get access to this information. They, are, they might be interested randomly, of course, to get access to this information. As you can see here, um, the critical information depends on, so here, there are some examples here, client information that your team has learned. That's why we're talking about here, these information, the server of the IP, username and password. These are information that you learn as you progress in your 
uh, red team uh, scenario or during pen test. So we may be, be learning the IP address of the SSH server. You may, be, you, may, you may get access to the username and password. These information are the, uh, the property of your client. You have to protect them. So that's what they meant, client information that your team has learned. Red team information. Now we, we said earlier that any information, any tools, any techniques related to the mission of the blue team or the red team are considered also critical because if the blue team is able to acquire uh, knowledge of this information they will be able to thwart the attack tactics techniques and purchases what we talk about them these are also critical information to your red team also we talked about the os that your team is using the ip addresses the domain names all of these information the blue team can use uh, to block the attack so basically you may, be, you may have heard the term um, the indicators of compromise so basically the blue team they are, most of the time they are after these information the indicators of compromise hashes domain names ip addresses um, os's fingerprints banners all of this information the blue team can find through logging uh, intrusion detection systems firewalls closely monitoring the network uh, if your red team is not able to hide or obfuscate this information, the blue team mission will be difficult. So let's take a look at the view side here, the task. So we have these boxes here. And we want to check the box of the statement that contains or that corresponds or that constitutes critical information. For example, your team uses Firefox exclusively to browse the internet. Is this critical information? Uh, nope. Although my team, the red team, is using Firefox and can be considered as one of their tools, but anyone is using Firefox. So it cannot be traced back to the team. So I'm not going to check box this. It's not critical information. Your team prefers to browse the internet using Lynx text based web browser. Now, this one, since this browser is not so popular, now if this is discovered that your team is using this browser or this tool, the, the blue team might block it so this is a piece of a critical information your team uses microsoft windows 10 as their primary operating system no nope, because more than half the world is using windows so it's not critical information your team uses sense offensive linux distributions hosted on cloud provider x would you consider this critical information of course if the attackers or if the blue team learns the operating system the bird team is using along with the hosting provider that is hosting the OS they will be able to take measures to block any attack originating from uh, or having the fingerprints of these uh, of this operating system or this cloud provider your team has registered a domain name webmail web mail okay whatever the host phishing sites would you consider this critical information of course because the blue team can block this domain on uh, their firewall and hence make your mission a failure. So we're going to check this, we're going to check this, and you will have the flag. Now we covered the first part of the OPSEC framework. First, we identified the critical information. Now we know what to protect. We know what to obfuscate. Then we need to start analyzing the threats. We need to go through threat analysis. Threat analysis is cons or constitutes a couple elements. The first element is the adversary. So in the red team from the red team perspective, the adversary here is the blue team. In addition to malicious third parties, malicious third parties can be those hackers who actually uh, randomly target servers and public IP addresses, public servers, to use them as bots. These are also your enemies because if you are in a red team, most of probably you will be going to get access to assets, company assets, servers, um, uh, files. So you will have access to these once your mission uh, succeeds. So basically you have to protect these as well from malicious attackers. What are the adversary's goals? So basically in the case of blue team, their goal you have to learn their goal and their goal is obvious their goal is to make your mission failure they want to prove that their security measures can prevent your attack 
So threat analysis so far covers who is the adversary, blue team or malicious uh, third parties, and what are their goals. Now, in the case of malicious third parties, their goals may vary, but most of the time, if they randomly target servers, most of the time they want to use it for the crypto mining. What tactics, techniques, and procedures does the adversary use? This comes to the tools our adversary is using. In the case of blue team, if the blue team was the adversary, um, we want to we want to know we want to get a, a hold of the tools they are using. What are what is the same software they are using? What is the version of the firewall? What is the network infrastructure looks like? What critical information has the adversary obtained, if any? Now, I know that we have covered critical information and we should have taken the necessary steps or the necessary measures to protect them, but also we need to analyze what kind of critical information the attackers or the blue team might have obtained. So, that's a summary here. The threat is the adversary, analyze the adversary, their intent and their capability. Okay, in the case of blue team, in the case of blue team, adversary is a blue team, their intent is to block your attack and the capabilities are the tools they are using. So we have um, defined what is critical and then we analyze the threats. We learned who is the adversary and we learned their intention and we might learn like some of the tools they are using. We learned we, that's how we analyze the threats. L next we we do vulnerability analysis now that doesn't mean that we will run vulnerability scanner because yeah as a web team um, along the process you might be running vulnerability scanners but here the vulnerability analysis corresponds to the vulnerabilities that may arise that would otherwise um, block or affect your plans so it is the vulnerability that's related to the process overall not the, your client vulnerabilities it's the vulnerabilities that may exist in the procedure or in the way the red team is conducting the operation against the x company that's how they find it a vulnerability exists when an adversary can obtain critical information like the blue team analyze the findings okay and act in a way that would affect your plans for example here um if they learn that then the IP address they are using you are using for your nmap scan so basically here they acquired critical information your IP address analyze the findings they will learn that you are using the IP as a scanning hub and then they will act in a way to affect your plan meaning they will block the IP address so this is a vulnerability a scenario for vulnerability this is an example here uh, they actually laid down which is Basically, you use Nmap to discover live host on a target, subnet and find open ports on live hosts, and then you send various phishing emails leading the victim to a phishing web page you're hosting. Furthermore, you're using the Metasploit framework to attempt to exploit certain software vulnerabilities. So these are separate activities, but here the bottom line is if you're using the same IP address, the blue team can create a pattern and block your attack. So that is a vulnerability. Okay, that's a possible scenario where the blue team can thwart the mission. Now, this example here talks about or takes um, uh, the adversary as someone else other than the blue team, which is uh, crypto miners or uh, third party malicious attackers. So here they're assuming that you have got access to your uh, client's information system and you have acquired uh, the uh, email addresses and usernames of the employees so these email addresses and usernames after you harvest them they will be sent to an unsecured database or a database that you host on your server as a red team right now if the database is unsecured it might be targeted by malicious attackers other than the blue team now this is also a vulnerability because this database might be compromised and then your client information will be exposed okay let's take the questions your red team uses THC Hider to find the password for a specific login page. Moreover, you are using the Metasploit framework on the same system as THC Hydra. Would you consider this a vulnerability? Of course. Because um, if you are using the same IP address, if the tools 
or the capabilities of your of the blue team learned the IP address that you are using to conduct the password attack and if they block the IP address your other attack or your other attempt using Metasploit will also be blocked automatically because they block the same IP address so that is a vulnerability scenario so we say yes one of the red team members posts a photo of this cat every day would this be considered an OPSEC vulnerability? no because if the member posts a photo of their cat even if the red team, the blue team saw this photo they wouldn't be able to do anything it, doesn't, it wouldn't affect the success rate of the attack or the prospective attack your red team went for dinner took a photo and tagged every team member on a popular social media platform now this is a vulnerability because if a blue team member uh, checks out the post where everyone is tagged they would create a pattern of the red team members and then they will be able to perform some sort of OSINT open source uh, intelligence on every member of the red team and they will be able to somehow pinpoint some of their skills now this is only information gathered by the blue team but these information can be used to lower the success rate of your attack and hence this constitutes a vulnerability your red team posts on its website a list of clients you regularly conduct red team exercises with now this might confuse you a bit how about because you are posting information about the client now this is not a vulnerability oh it is a vulnerability oh yeah I think I confuse this with this one. So your red team posts on its website a list of clients you regularly conduct red team exercises with. Yes, it is a vulnerability because you are exposing your client information. One of your red team members, now this one, posted a photo of her morning coffee. Of course not. It is not a vulnerability. Now, so far, so forth, we identified critical information, we analyzed the threats, who is the adversary, what are their capabilities, what are their intentions, and also we analyzed we perform vulnerability analysis we consider the scenarios where the blue team would be able to block the attack and then we will do risk assessment now risk assessment is a term used in multiple under multiple contexts like in compliance in information security management while creating information security program um, even in non-information security systems like uh, to per uh, risk assessments can be used against natural disasters but here risk assessment is used to lower the risks of your attack being uh, a failure so here as you can see conducting a risk assessment and risk assessment requires learning the possibility of an event taking place so what is the probability that the blue team can do this and can do that we consider this as a risk so and we have to assign a score for the risk a score for the risk relies on its probability, the likelihood of, it, of, its, of its occurrence, and the cost that would incur if the uh, event took place. So these are the three elements as you can see. The efficiency of the counter... Now, once the, risk, once the level of risk is determined, countermeasures can be considered. So basically, um, an example risk here as you can see, we consider the vulnerability of scanning the network with nmap using the metasploit framework and hosting the phishing page using the same ip address so this is as you can see a high risk right because the probability of an of the blue team matching the pattern between the nmap scan and the metasploit framework in addition to the phishing pages is high because they will detect that it's uh, all of these attacks originate from the same IP address so the, prob the probability here is high so we say the risk here is high as you can see we can expect that a seam would make it reasonably uncomplicated to detect suspicious activity and connect the three events these three events originates originate from the same IP address so in the logs same IP address will appear as if it is um, responsible for all of these events hence it will be analyzed and blocked so the probability here is high on the other hand if we know that adversary has minimal resources for detecting security events we can assess the risk to low so that depends on two aspects basically the risk score depends on 
how obvious it is to spot the attacker or to spot the red team activities and what are the capabilities of the blue team as you can see the blue team has minimal resources even if you are using or even if you, even if it's easy to spot you it's gonna it's a risk will be low because the blue team has no resources or minimal resources for detecting security events Your team uses THT Hider to find the password for a specific login page. Moreover, they are using Metasploit framework on the same system as Hydra. Knowing that, now this is actually 50% of the high risk. Knowing that your target uses a properly configured IDS, now this one completes the equation and now it is considered a high risk. So, in analyzing the risks, first we want uh, to see or to learn whether the blue team or the adversary here uh, what's, what are the chances that they are able to spot the attack what, by learning their tools and capabilities counter measures now that we're in the risks we were going to be able to put the counter measures so the counter measures we, we want to prevent the, uh, the adversaries from detecting critical information or providing alternative interpretation like honeypots or deception So, the example laid down below here, it's about the same, it's the same uh, example, Nmap, the same machine running Nmap, Metasploit, and phishing sites. So the countermeasure here to protect the operation is obvious, is to run every single aspect of the red team operation from a single IP of different IP address. So this way, you will lower the chances of being blocked. More practical example. Now this one is kind of tricky, but we're going to analyze uh, and answer the questions. As you can see here, guys, we have scenarios, and for every scenario, we have to match every scenario or every statement with the corresponding number, whether it is critical information, threat, vulnerabilities, risks, or countermeasures according to OPSEC. So you have to analyze every statement, okay, and write here the corresponding number. And between every number we have to put a space all right so knowing that their company has assigned a red team uh, okay knowing that their company has assigned a red team will alert the blue team to the incoming attack the alert happens if the red team is outsourced however this won't be new information for the blue team if the red team is part of the company staff if the blue team anticipates you it might affect their alert level which in turn might affect the accuracy of the results now if we want to match this to one of the uh, classifications below it would be reasonable to say it is a risk it is not critical information here we are not talking about domains okay and it might be somewhat a threat because they are talking about the blue team right but here um, we didn't talk about the the complete picture like we didn't draw the complete picture about the threat like yeah the blue team but what are the intentions what are the uh, other capabilities we don't have we don't have any idea and of course it is not a vulnerability it is not a no nor it is a countermeasure it is a risk so basically here, the risk here is the blue team is prepared with the tools required to thwart the attack so here we're talking about as you can see the accuracy of the results anything that would affect the accuracy of the result is considered as risk it can be also vulnerability by the way i'm trying to confuse you here so vulnerabilities also affect the accuracy of the results but here we know that the, red, the blue team has not yet acquired any uh, piece of, of critical information to be able to affect the accuracy of the result we're talking here about only possibilities so here it is a risk space all right the next one this will depend on the company and the blue team leave this as the, the last one we would consider the name of the client as a critical information now this might sound like we are talking about critical information but it is not because as you can see the last one is a client name the client name here obviously it is the first one critical information but we would consider the name of the client as 
um, critical information it is a threat okay so we have now two here okay and we have four here and we have one here now this one we realize that we prefer to keep this piece of because this one is not clear we realize that we prefer to keep this piece of information hidden from the blue team this way we can attack while they are going on their while they are going on with their usual routine now this one is a vulnerability because we define the blue team because sorry because we define the blue team yeah, as adversary and we're talking about what would they do okay if they acquire this piece of hidden information that would affect the success of the attack so this one is as you can see it's three so four so this one the last one will be five so four space five space two space three space one if you submit it will take you to the other set of questions okay collected client information this is obvious it is the critical information so one next malicious users might target random vulnerable targets okay depending on their motives and skills for instance if you have retrieved the password of one of the employees via phishing and the online database is not secured it will be like helping third parties break your client so this one might be uh, a confusion between countermeasures okay and threats because in threats we analyze the adversary we analyze their intentions here we are talking about malicious users okay as an adversary and their intentions okay so basically here but it is kind of encouraging statement to let you know that we have to secure the database it will be like helping third parties break into your client so here, apply a countermeasure to protect your client information so we're gonna say one and then five for countermeasure if the information you are collecting is not stored securely it will be an easy target for malicious parties i'm going to read that again if the information you are collecting is not stored securely it will be an easy target for malicious parties so this is one is a risk it is for this would extend beyond the blue team malicious third parties can use the information you have collected to cause harm to your client now this is a vulnerability right because it would jeopardize your mission so it is three vulnerability anything that would jeopardize your mission is a vulnerability so we're going to say it is three and lastly any collected in client information be it through OSINT or other means should be treated as critical information again this might be a uh, confusion with the first one but it is not expressed as literally critical information it's saying that any collected any collected client information be it through OSINT or other means okay this collected information should be treated as a critical information why because threats that my because threats um such as blue team or the intentions of malicious attackers they might target it so we're gonna say it is two it is a threat it is reasonable to expect that the remote server logs the ip addresses from which we connect okay a vigilant blue team should be scanning the log files and trying to correlate the findings so here it is not critical information it is not an anal analysis of the blue team and their capabilities so it's not a threat also it is not a vulnerability here we're not talking about the fd uh, the uh, the uh, success rate of the operation we're talking about either the risks or countermeasures so it could be risks here and it could be countermeasures but it is more accurately as a countermeasure here because we're not talking about the capabilities the literal capabilities of the blue team and what they are using to thwart the attack so it is a countermeasure you have to somehow as you can see uh, randomize the ip addresses so you can say it's five public ip addresses used by your team should be treated as critical information public IP address used by the team look at these two these two are kind of overlapping they, they might seem overlapping right public IP address used by the team and public IP address used by your team should be treated should be treated as critical information 
so here is only a statement that defines the nature of the IP address right so it is this one it is critical information here but this one it is not critical information although public IP address used by the team are critical information but here the statement is telling you that it should be treated as a critical information so it's not countermeasure no it is more like threats because these critical information should the IP addresses should be treated as critical information because the blue team right the adversary is the blue team and their capabilities might spot these IP addresses so it's a threat um, as we use different tools beyond passive reconnaissance the adversary will be able to collect information related to the systems we are using the log files will include the IP addresses from which we connected hence there's a chance they will thwart the attack so it could be vulnerability or risks but it is more like risk the blue team is interested in knowing the IP addresses that we use to launch our attacks three vulnerability and lastly it is one critical information I, I will admit guys the statements here are not that clear so it's okay if you couldn't solve it I've, I've actually took me some time to figure it out and this is the last one domain names used for red team operations including phishing read this one and read this one domain names registered by the red team so this one is yes critical information okay this one is a threat domain names used for red team operations including phishing the threat because the blue team and their capabilities will be able to spot them so it's a threat the blue team is the main threat as they are always hunting phishing sites targeting their companies vulnerability this one is yes domain names are registered by the red team are is critical information and we have the last two it might take a single user to forward a website with a phishing link to the responsible security team to get the domain and possibly associated IP address blocked and this one once the blue team discovers a phishing site they will block it on the proxy firewall level here they are talking about the tools as you can see so it's a risk okay now this one above it is countermeasure because we have to consider this scenario if the blue team is able to forward the phishing link and hence block the domain so five four and this is your flag so that was it guys i hope you enjoyed the video and i will see you later